Florida's red wave included money and organization and leadership in what pollsters call the Hispanic vote. Governor DeSantis swept the Hispanic vote in Miami-Dade County, won a majority in Broward County as well, did not do quite as well among Puerto Rican voters in Central Florida. They mostly gravitated to Charlie Crist. We want to talk about all this with two experienced political consultants. Fernand Amandi is a principal in Dixon, in Dixon Amandi International polling outfit there in Coconut Grove. He works mainly with Democratic candidates. And also with us for the first time, and we are glad to see him, is our friend Giancarlo Sopo, a Republican consultant, writer, analyst. He headed the Trump campaign's rapid response for Spanish media in 2020. Giancarlo. Fernand, great to see you guys. <laughs> great to be with you. AKA in the thick of it all. So let's start out with, um, you know, this is kind of interesting to me. So Giancarlo, Florida's red wave was actually an outlier nationally because even you know, the, ca the count isn't even done yet in some places, but in Michigan, there was actually a blue wave uh, around the country. It just didn't materialize, but boy, did it in Florida. What's that? Yeah, uh, Florida does appear to be an outlier in many ways. Uh, but one thing that I will say is that I do think the Republicans as a whole made very impressive gains with Hispanics across the country. In fact, according to the exit polls, Republicans just had their best performance ever with Hispanics in a midterm election, cutting the margins, the 40 point margin that the Democrats had in 2018, cutting them down to 21 points. But you're absolutely right. The results as a whole were pretty disappointing across the country. And I think the success in Florida, for if you're a Republican, can be attributed to having a strong governor and a strong senator in Marco Rubio, who ran on a uh, affirmative policy vision, not just opposing what's happening in Washington, but actually offering solutions, and voters rewarded them with their votes. Yeah. Uh, Fernand Amandi, uh, old friend of mine. Uh, Fernand, uh, Ron DeSantis just trounced Charlie Crist in Miami-Dade County, uh, first time in 20 years that a Republican has won in the governor's race, and he especially he won, I think, because he got the great majority of Hispanic votes. Why did they vote for him? Well, Michael, I must confess, I'm still a little bit triggered by you and Glenna opening the program with those images of the Dover Hotel being demolished, because not only as a Beatle maniac, but as a Democrat, it's an apt metaphor for what Governor DeSantis and the, and the Republicans have done here in Florida. And, and for similar reasons, by the way, I mean, this is a case of here in Florida, at least, the Democratic Party's collapse because of demolition by neglect. It was only 10 years ago that uh, Barack Obama carried the state for the second time in a row, largely on the strength of overwhelming support from Hispanics, uh, a campaign that I was very much involved in. Giancarlo are also an enthusiastic volunteer on both of those efforts. So it should have been a huge reversal of fortunes. But you have to credit what Ron DeSantis and the Republican Party has done here. They've been engaged in a permanent campaign operation. After the 2012 election, when they could have given up, they decided instead to reinvest, double down their efforts as a party. And they had that historic result. I think the question is, are these changes in Florida permanent? Or are the Democrats now going to try and implement a five to 10 year plan to turn the reversal of fortune around here in Florida for the upcoming cycles? That's, I think, the question that all Democrats in Florida and across the country are asking themselves, Michael, so, today. So don't you need money for that, though? And I, I don't know if you were able to hear our interview with Fentress Driscoll la in our last segment, but I guess the question that I'd love to hear from both of you What's the chicken and the egg here? Because money follows success and engagement and enthusiasm. And if there is none, well, there's not going to be money. But if there is no money, then how do you generate enthusiasm and engagement? So what, what is that chicken and the egg? And why isn't it here? Glenda, let me answer that because I think the key here is I'm of the opinion you cannot concede Florida. And here's the reason why strategically. If the Republicans feel that Florida is in their back pocket, the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars that they spend here every cycle will then be used to go on offense in other states where the Democrats are only winning by minor margins. So you've got to keep them on the defensive here. Also, I think this can turn around very quickly. How do I know? Because none other than Donald Trump, who uh, John Carly used to work for, has admitted Donald uh, Ron DeSantis is 
uh, an ineffective governor. He's Ron the Sanctimonious. And I think he is a poison pill that could very quickly split the Republican Party here in Florida and put the Democrats competitive again, particularly if the economic moves that the Biden administration made over these last two years that have created over 10 million jobs, that have lowered inflation, start to really come online and people feel the effects of that. So I don't think that money is necessarily gone for the long term. Yeah, but Giancarlo, you know well, you are a Miami native. Uh, you study these things. The Republican Party in Florida has 300,000 more registered voters now than Democrats. And just a couple of years ago, it was the reverse. I mean, the Republicans have outorganized, uh, outworked the, the Democratic, you know, machine, such as it is, not running very well. And, you know, the Republicans have got something going here. And I, whether, you know, I, I think that they're, the possibility of them being in power, they've been in power in Florida for 15 years. I think that uh, the likelihood of them staying there is great, isn't it? Yeah, this is a great time to be a Republican in Florida. Uh, we just had a, a record performance definitely in my lifetime. I've never seen a 20 point uh you know, a landslide like that in the Sunshine State, it's unheard of. Senator Rubio also did really well. I, I, I think Governor DeSantis's leadership combined with Senator Rubio's leadership, and then on a local level, when you see places in Miami like Maria Salazar, Congresswoman uh, from Florida District 27, who just won uh, by 15 points in a district that had been tied just uh, just two years ago in the presidential. Yeah. I think that yeah. kind of Jean leadership Carlo, just let really me, attracts let me voters in. and there's a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah, let, let, I'm sorry, let me jump in and simply say, uh, Maria Elvira won that race in large part because she stuck a label of socialist on her opponent, Annette Tadeo, uh, who is a center left Democrat, but certainly not a socialist. But, you know, I'd say that's a lot of the reason why she won, wasn't it? No, I, I think she won because she's an effective bipartisan legislator. She's been rated as one of the most bipartisan leaders in Congress. She took some votes that maybe folks on Twitter didn't like, but that were very popular in, in her community. She's someone who's connected to her community. She has excellent constituent services. I, I think she learned a lot from our, our mutual friend, Congresswoman Ileana ross Layton. in that regard. You have to, if you're a Congresswoman or, or, or man, you have to be very close to your constituents. And her constituents love her. If you're ever out and about with her in South Florida, people gravitate toward her, want to take selfies. She's just very well liked. And that may be largely because she's been on television as a <laughs> broadcaster for half of her life. But I want to talk about the Democratic candidates, some of them. Fernand, take Val Demings for Senate. She is a congresswoman, a former police chief, a black woman who checks all the right boxes on the Democratic messaging points. Started out so strong uh, in polling against Senator Rubio. Same kind of with Charlie Crist in a way, the polling at the beginning, neck and neck, and then it all just kind of fell apart in the last two weeks. What happened to go from enthusiasm and inspiration to almost flatlining? What happened there? Well, I mean, Glenna, first off, there's no question initially she checked a lot of the box that I had a lot of Democrats enthused, not just here in Florida, but across the country. Part of the reason why she raised over $80 million in her campaign, not with a lot of support from the National Party, by the way, but really grassroots donors that felt energized by her candidacy. But it was a disappointing outcome, and I think you have to look at just the overall environment in the state. I've been working Florida politics for 25 years. For me, for the first time, on both sides, I might add, it didn't really feel like there was a campaign environment or atmosphere in Florida, certainly on the television advertisements. But beyond that, you just didn't really see the candidates engaging in the community, certainly not here in South Florida, which we knew was an area that Democrats had to do a lot better than in 2020. Well, so actually, think, actually, in the last couple of days, the last week, she was here almost every day. That's way too late, Glenna. We're not an election anymore that's on election day in the last couple of days. Election month really starts all the way from October through November. By that time, voters have decided, voters have thought and made their case. And I think she needed to start it a lot earlier. But again, this is very interesting because there is a phenomenon happening, which Giancarlo acknowledges. Florida is an outlier. The United States electorate for three national elections in a row has rejected 
the Republican Party. So the question is, can that be exported out of Florida, which is now Mecca for MAGA? This is the MAGA state. Donald Trump lives here. Ron DeSantis lives here. They're not going to fight to the death to see who is King MAGA. But will that be exported? I think the answer to that is up in the air. John Carlo, is, is Florida a MAGA state or just a Republican state? I think it's a Republican state. I think it's difficult to argue that uh, Senator Rubio is MAGA. Uh, and and he, he just had an extraordinary election. He won by, like you said, by 17 points, despite being outspent. I think it's a very interesting question what Fernand raised, which is, can this be exported elsewhere? I think there are very promising signs. Look, according to the exit polls, both Governor DeSantis and Senator Rubio just won the Puerto Rican vote. Uh, that is unheard of in the Sunshine State. Uh, they also won other non-Cuban Hispanics. Uh, so, and the largest cohort among them are Mexican Americans and Colombian Americans, which there are plenty of uh, throughout the country, especially the former. I also think when you look closely at the exit polling, you see that both Senator Rubio and Governor DeSantis won hands down by about 30 point margins with white suburban voters outperforming the national GOP ticket among that demographic group by about 10 points. I mean, look, right now what we're seeing in Nevada, where it looks like Adam Laxalt has lost, he only won white suburban voters by four. Republicans would love to have, would love to be winning white suburban voters by 30 points all across the country. Yeah. Uh, Fernand, well, on Thursday night, uh, President Trump tried to pick a fight with Ron DeSantis called him an average governor uh, with great public relations and again said he wouldn't have been the governor in the first place if he had not if he Trump had not endorsed him and Governor DeSantis I think wisely has just sort of laid back you know has not responded uh, that will be his strategy won't it oh it's going to be even more than that he's not going to run against Donald Trump Michael you don't think so Donald uh, I, there's really? no question in my mind, uh, unless Governor DeSantis is not as smart as I think he is, because he'll turn him into low energy, uh, little Governor Ron DeSanctimonious in one second flat. And remember, Michael, the wing of the Republican Party that is, to my judgment, the dominant wing, the MAGA wing. In my judgment, it's a political cult. You can only have one political cult leader at a time. We saw what happened when Marco Rubio tried to run for president. He got destroyed within the Republican primary. He lost every county in Florida except Miami-Dade in the Florida Republican primary last time. So as long as Donald Trump wants the nomination and he's going to announce it on Tuesday here in Florida, it's his and DeSantis would not dare take him on because he'll get crushed. Well, and Senator Marco Rubio was on stage with former President Donald Trump on Sunday right here in South Florida. Yeah. Um, we we got to go, but you all are welcome back anytime, anytime. so we can... We can pick apart everything that happens from now until 2024. Thank you so much. Giancarlo, Fernand, thanks so much. Great. Thank you.